Alright, so we've seen the area of a lot of different 2D shapes, but quite often in real life, uh, things aren't exactly you know, perfect triangles or perfect squares or circles, and they aren't even made up of uh, a small number of perfect triangles or rectangles or whatever. And so, how do we find the area of any 2D blob that doesn't take the shape of one of our standard you know, mathematical shapes? One way of doing this is called the trapezoidal rule. Okay, so it's a way to uh, estimate, have a pretty good approximation for the area of any weirdly shaped blob, right? And so we'll look at, uh, at the area of a trapezium again, just to remind ourselves of what that is. So we took a trapezium and we had two measurements A and B. They were the lengths of the parallel sides. We also had a height H, the distance between the parallel sides. And we did this, I think, by cutting the trapezium into two triangles, which we can split apart. We can get the area of each one. We put the H together with the fraction so that after we did that, we could group them into the same term, giving us a total area of H over two, bracket a plus b, and that was the area of the trapezium. We saw that the a plus b were once again adding up the parallel sides, while h was a distance between those parallel sides. Now I ran through that a lot quicker this time around, there's a video on that where I go through that slowly um, a bit before, but uh, that was what we saw last time. And um, I make a big deal about what the A and B and H mean because we'll be needing that very soon. So A and B are adding up the parallel sides while H is keeping track of the distance between the parallel sides, how far apart they are. Okay, That's going to be real important in just a moment. So we take our weirdly shaped blob. Right. And a way to approximate the area, as the trapezoidal rule suggests, is you want to use trapeziums. So if we use one trapezium, it looks a bit like this. And that's a horrible approximation because we've left out the entire top chunk. But then we can change, and instead of using just one trapezium, we could use two trapeziums, and that's much better. Or we could even use three. Right, and actually we won't do this by hand, but you can quite easily with a computer use uh, more and more, so another, and more, and more, and more, and more, and more, and by the time you do this, you see how these trapeziums, I think they were, I think I coded like 20 something of them, um, they, they form a really good approximation to the exact area of the blob then, right? And so we could do it, using computer like that, but just so that we test how much you understand this, we won't get you to do that many, we'll just get you to do a few of them, maybe say three of them by hand. Okay, so the idea is to use trapeziums, multiple trapeziums, stacked together to try and approximate the area of that blob. Okay, so we need to give a few names to the uh, different lengths here. I'll call those parallel vertical edges, uh, A, B, C, and D and I'll call the distance between those parallel sides, as we saw in the area of a trapezium, we'll call that one H, okay? And we're going to look at these trapeziums one at a time. So let's just say we look at the one on the far left. The area would be H over two, bracket, A plus B. That's the area of just the one trapezium. So the distance between the parallel sides is H, take that over two, bracket a plus b, the sum of the parallel sides. Now, we're going to keep in mind what happens when we add on to this the next trapezium, because if we do that, the h on 2 is exactly the same. And so all we need to do is to add on the two parallel sides to join the ones we've already got inside the bracket. So the b and c will join in with the a and b inside the bracket, but what that means is we now have two b's and a C. So we had an A plus B already, and when B plus C joined that, now we have two copies of B, but still only one of A and one of C. Okay. So what happens when we add the last trapezium than this one? Well, the H on 2 again is exactly the same, and this time when C and D join the stuff we've already got inside the brackets, well, I'll now have two copies of C and only one copy of D. Okay, because we had A and 2B and C and D, and so when C and D join that, that gives us two copies of C, but only one copy of D. 
And so how I like to think about this is that altogether, um, the h is still the width of each section and they have to be equal. But what's in the bracket is that we take one of the end measurements, the a and d, there's only one copy of them, and we take two copies of all of the middle measurements we have there. Okay, so this works no matter how many trapeziums we use, we can always just take one of the ends and two of the middles inside that bracket and add them all together and then multiply by h over 2, where h is the width of each of those sections, and that width must be the same. Okay, so let's see an example of this. Um, this was from a HSC paper a couple, a couple of years ago. Um, and the dotted stuff you see there uh, is a field, apparently, between a road and a river. And you're given that the width of each section is 7.5 metres, and there's all of those 8.8, 7.1, 9.8, 8.5, and 4.9 there. And so what's the area of this going to approximate to be? So we follow the form that we saw uh, just then, which is where the area is approximately, and I've left a lot of blank spaces there. All right, and we're going to fill in uh, all of those blanks as we go. So what was that number over 2? That was the h number, right? And that was the width of each section. So 7.5 jumps in there. Okay. And for the measurements from the road to the river, I think the easiest ones were the end ones because we only needed one copy of the ends. So we need one copy of the 8.8 .8 and one copy of the 4.9. Then the middle ones. What was special about the middle ones? The middle ones we need two copies of because they got counted twice when we added up all of those trapeziums. So we need two of those middles and so in they go. And pretty much when you do this, you can just put all of that in one go into your calculator and you get to 41.88. Okay, so just remember all of those components. The number over two at the start of the bracket is the width of each section, the equal width of each section. Then inside the big bracket, you put one copy of the end measurements and two copies of each of those middle measurements because they get counted twice as you travel along all of those trapeziums. And that's the trapezoidal rule. Thanks for watching. See you later.